Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about our own moon. Now when you look at the moon you may actually think about different things but sometimes what I think about is all of those craters that we get to see on the surface of the moon. The moon as you might already know has a tremendous amount of craters of various sizes. Some of them are small but some of them are really really huge and it's the really really big ones that I was always fascinated with. Now, uh, when most people look at the actual surface, they actually believe that these dark spots that sometimes look like a face actually um, are also craters. And to some extent, they are right, but it's not really all of them. As a matter of fact, uh, there's only one that we're going to talk about that is a real crater. The rest of the dark spots are actually what's known as mare. They're essentially the leftovers from a tremendously large volcanic eruption that happened several billion years ago, and we've talked about this in one of the previous videos. But today we're talking about the largest craters on the moon, specifically two really, really, really big ones. One of them you can't really see, and one of them you actually can. Now, the biggest crater is actually invisible to us simply because it's located on the opposite side of the moon. And it's relatively difficult to see um, unless you're actually trained to see these craters. There's actually a lot of them here, but to see this specific crater, you need to really zoom out and look right here. And if you kind of look carefully, you'll see that there's a really large circle here. It's a tremendously large crater. This is known as the South Pole Aitken Basin, and um, it's essentially the biggest crater on the moon, but not really easily visible. The thing is, you can actually see a part of it from Earth, specifically if you actually look at the moon how we see it at night, and you look at the southern side, specifically with some sort of a relatively powerful telescope, you'll see the uh, southern rim of this crater. And the southern rim is, well, it's actually really, really tall mountains. It's basically the kind of a protrusion that was left from the collision that happened here approximately 4 billion years ago. Essentially, let me actually demonstrate this by colliding, let's say, Phobos with, uh, with the moon. So, okay, that was a little bit too small. Let's pick something bigger because this was a much larger object that collided with the moon that created this type of crater. It was actually something that was probably uh, around the size of Vesta, approximately 250 to maybe even 300 kilometers in um, radius. So a really, really, really large object. And so here, when an object collides with the moon, or really with anything, it's going to form a really large hole-like crater, but it's also going to create these relatively um, tall borders. And these borders right here, they're essentially kind of like mountains. And this is exactly what we see in the southern part of the moon um, and technically is visible with a telescope. And these mountains located in the south are known as the Leibniz Mountains. Um, and essentially, that's basically the southern tip of this particular crater. But you need to actually go on the darker side of the moon to be able to see the rest of the crater. Now, um, currently, this is actually where the Chinese Chang'e 4 mission is uh, located as well. But because this is such a large, large place, obviously a lot of things could be happening here. Specifically, the Chang'e 4 is near the Von Karman crater, um, which is part of this very, very large basin. Now, the interesting thing about this part of the moon is that the crust here, the actual thickness of the crust, is much, much thinner than everywhere else on the moon. The crust here is only about 30 kilometers, whereas everywhere else on the moon, it's uh, anywhere from 60 to 80 kilometers. And this is really kind of the demonstration of how powerful this collision was, that it squeezed the moon, making this part much, much thinner. And this protrusion itself, if you were to actually stand in the middle of it, is about 13 kilometers deep. So you would be actually standing in a hole that's 13 kilometers deep and over 2,500 kilometers in diameter, which is approximately 1,700 miles. So it's, this is a really, really tremendously large object, one of the largest in our solar system, as a matter of fact. The other thing about here is that not only is the hole deep, but also the mountains surrounding this crater are also very, very tall. And this particular collision is also uh, somewhat obvious because this area is slightly darker than the rest of the dark side of the moon. And it's actually just called dark side because we can't see it. Technically, it's the far side of the moon. 
and uh, it's darker because there's quite a large deposit of um, iron oxide, but also titanium oxide. So one of these days, maybe sometime in the near future, we might be able to use uh, all of this iron and titanium and actually mine it and use it for some kind of a creation of future spaceships or even developing a completely autonomous city because this region would be a quite an amazing area to actually settle. And what's really interesting about this particular collision is that we now think that it actually didn't um, happen face on. It was most likely under an angle. In other words, when this object collided with the moon, it was probably fl flying something like this. Basically, it collided with the moon under a slight angle and then deposited a very large amount of material on the northeast side where we now actually have a very large magnetic anomaly. And this is due to all of the metal that was deposited actually right here in the northeast. And um, all of this suggests that this was a collision with an object that was approximately a few hundred kilometers in diameter. And it most likely was a relatively low speed collision where a huge amount of material, possibly even more than I just collided with the moon, way, way more, um, ended up basically landing on this side of the moon. So a pretty impressive collision. Probably a very spectacular one as well, because this was 4 billion years ago, and back then the moon was much, much closer to Earth. Only um, something like 50 to 60,000 kilometers away from Earth. So it's very likely that whatever collided here, a lot of it probably also fell into our planet as well. Now, the second largest crater on the moon is actually visible from Earth, and it's this right here. This is known as the Imbrium Crater, and it also was a, a result of a somewhat similar collision um, and possibly happened only a few hundred million years after the first collision. Now, quite a lot of various missions actually uh, happen in this particular region of the moon, including Chang'e 3, actually, and also several Apollo and Luna missions. But the collision was probably from something like this, a direct impact from an object that was a few hundred kilometers in size. And this is how the Imbrium crater was formed. Uh, now, normally, if you look at the moon, it's uh, you pretend that it's a face. It's sort of like the right eye of the face that's where the Imbrium is located. And in Space Engine, we can actually um, even come to it a little bit closer and land there as well. So this region is also quite interesting and it's very likely that if we were to actually start building a colony on the moon, it would be in a region similar to this because this is where we also would expect to find quite a tremendous amount of minerals uh, and some of them would actually be quite beneficial to a future colony that we build here. Now, this region is also um, relatively flat, as you can see. It doesn't have as many other smaller craters. And this, to us, suggests that um, it basically uh, resulted in a very large volcanic-like activity after the collision. And this is how this mare was formed. All of this was basically just molten lava for a pretty long time. Eventually, as you can see, it did receive some of the collisions, but the amount of craters here is much lower in terms of the large craters than we have, let's say, somewhere here. You'll see a lot more craters on the side that wasn't affected by this large impact. But just the fact that we have these two collisions, uh, these two large craters, suggests that even our own planet Earth probably received something very similar billions of years ago. Now, these craters are probably still um, kind of visible on Earth, but we just are not really sure what to look for because our planet has experienced such a large amount of erosion over time that only about 120 large craters are visible today. For the most part, we don't really see anything like we do on the moon because the moon doesn't actually have any erosion. So everything here stays forever or for a really long time. If, however, a, a similar collision occurred about 4 billion years ago right here on Earth, it would most likely leave a relatively large and possibly somewhat difficult to see um, round-ish um, object that would appear, well, in some sense, similar to, I guess, maybe some kind of a continental feature that we think is natural, but in reality it would be a collision. It's actually kind of difficult to see these and to study these on Earth because of the, all of the erosion, but I'm pretty sure that we've also received just as many collisions as the Moon, but our planet is just really good at hiding them. 
And so hopefully in time, as we understand the erosion and also the evolution of craters better, we'll probably find more of these, and this will help us understand how our planet Earth evolved and, most importantly, how life on Earth started, because today most scientists believe that life actually started as a result of these multiple collisions that pretty much brought all of the essentials, including things like nitrogen and, of course, metals of all sorts, that your bodies are full of. So yeah, we need to understand how all of this happened in order for us to understand life. But for now, I guess what we need to start planning is the next mission to the moon that will hopefully bring a permanent settlement where we can hopefully use our knowledge and our understanding of these craters to create a functioning colony. And looks like my moon is falling apart because I placed it too close to Earth and the tidal effects are basically ripping it apart. Anyway, on that note, hopefully you learned a little bit more about the moon and now you know what the biggest crater and also the second biggest crater on the moon are. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching things about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.